Welcome to Computer Science E1. My name is David Malin, and this is the little special something after exam one. So you can see that there's something a little intimidating going on if we have uh, four empty chairs. I've just asked you to write down questions and answers with your names on them, but this is all meant to be in good fun. It's a time-honored tradition in E1 to conclude exam one in this way. And in this way, I mean that we need to fill these seats. In fact, we need a fifth volunteer as well. Uh, just to make things interesting, I won't even tell you what you're volunteering for quite yet. Um, but I need one volunteer to play the role of a, a Vanna White of sorts. This is a non-speaking role. It is a twirling role, a standing role, and you must write things on the board. But beyond that, no one need ever know which questions you do and don't know answers to. Would anyone like to fill this, this very important role? Of, yes, we have our Vanna White. Come on up. In just a moment, I'm going to ask our Vanna White for tonight to jot down the first of a few tidbits on the screen. But first, I now need to fill the four seats. These, unfortunately, are speaking roles. However, you may come up with a buddy. We need two teams of two so that you can take the pressure off yourselves a little bit by telling us later, insisting later, if you don't get some question right, that it's the other guy. So with that said, do I have two volunteers who would like to fill two of these chairs? I'm sorry? Is it worth anything on the exam? We shall see how it goes, how about? <laughs> two volunteers. It's always hardest to volunteer for. How oh, we have one volunteer. Come on down. And a second volunteer. Excellent. Now we need volunteers three and four. I'm sort of separating them here arbitrarily. This role is just as scary as the previous two roles. But I need two more volunteers. Two more volunteers. Is that a little? Yeah? Timid? Yes? Uh, that's okay at this point, but do ha take uh, your choice of seats. We need one more volunteer. Here we go. All right, we have our five volunteers at this point. This is a time-honored tradition, as I said, and what you're about to see is our own little variant on. Oh, that was not nearly dramatic enough since the volume was far too low. This is a time-honored tradition in E1 when we have... <laughs> so we do have three teams, in fact, previous to tonight's exam. The three teaching fellows were kind enough to volunteer of their own accord to take on the role of team number three. What I'll need our Vanna White to do in just a moment is to inscribe on the board here the names that each of these three teams are about to choose for themselves. So we'll start with the teaching fellows. What would you like your name to be inscribed as up here on the board? How about the TS? But TS, yes. <laughs> clever choice. How about our middle team? By what name would you like to go tonight? Group A. Yeah. Okay. okay. Group A. Group A. <laughs> <laughs> Further impressive. And our final team? We're Steve. Steve. Okay. <laughs> so we have Steve versus Group A versus the teaching fellows. Well, needless to say, the questions for this game have come from you. To keep things simple, we will ask things in the form of questions rather than asking things in the form of answers and expecting questions back. But we have chosen the following five categories from which to draw our questions. That first category tonight is bitter, referring, of course, to our first category, bits or bytes. Our second category tonight will be disk, dat, or the other thing. <laughs> All right, clever. Thank you. <laughs> our... our <laughs> My role tonight is clearly to be witty. <laughs> cool. Round three, or category three, is spam. Category four tonight is going to be the worldwide wait, referring, of course, to the worldwide web. Spam referring, of course, to our email category. And finally, exam one being the fifth of our categories. We're going to proceed now to single jeopardy. Prior to this game, uh, we flipped coins, and Steve won the coin toss. So it will first be up to Steve to select one of these categories, which again are up top there, or also enumerated here at left in more real terms. Steve, how would you like to begin? Spam for $1,000. High rollers here. And for $1,000, your question is, what is an email? 
to anyone. Oh, of course, in Jeopardy, we, we have no buzzers. See, I've done this too long. We have no buzzers, of course. So Vanna's job will also be to judge whose hand in any of the groups goes up first. The moment a hand goes up, though, you have committed your group, whether Steve number one or Steve number two knows it or not, to answer that question. There's no going back on the hand being raised. If you miss the question, you'll, of course, lose 1,000 points in this case. If you get the question right, you'll, of course, gain $1,000 in this case. Okay, with that said, Steve? Your question, for everyone in fact, the first to raise their hand, and now this is quite the setup, what is an email? Right. Okay. Electronic mail. Electronic mail. So now, of course, the audience, since you wrote the questions, you're going to play the judge. Is, is that correct? <laughs> Impressive. Okay, I heard one. Wait, all right. We're not going to get any applause from the audience. Hang on. I am entirely self sufficient. <laughs> I think the TFs have just earned themselves $1,000. And control of the board. Ray, Dan, and. Uh, 1000 right in this column. TFs, what category would you like next? Exam one. Exam one for just $200. And your question is, why was the exam so disappointing? <laughs> Anyone? Well, it wasn't too hard. It wasn't too hard. Now, the audience's answer was, because it was old-fashioned pen and paper rather than computer-based. So, audience, I think we have to take away the $200 from missing the question. So, they're down 200 but they're still in the lead with 800 They still have control of the board. Uh, Roman and team, what category would you like next? Uh, bitter for 600 Bitter for $600. Your question here for Bitter for $600 are, and again, first hand to go up. I don't, I've never seen this game. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Good <laughs> conference here. So they missed the $200 question. So you can simply erase this and make it $800 okay. for having lost that many times. My apologies. All right. For $600, the question for the first hand to go up is how many bits are in a byte? I have eight. Almost a trick question. Although, how did I read the question? You said how many bits? Oh, so I actually asked the question backwards. It was meant to be a trick question. In parentheses, the student wrote tricky. The question was actually supposed to be how many bytes in a bit, which would have been one eight. But of course, since my brain reversed it, it is in fact eight bits in a byte. So that is correct for six hundred dollars. And around us. <laughs> Bits for 400 or bytes or wherever you are. Uh, bits for 400. First from hands to go up gets the question How many bytes are in one bit? Okay. It's group A. One um, A. Okay, this time the answer is none. A byte is larger than a bit, but I think we can give them it on a technicality. <laughs> <laughs> that would be $400. And control of the board goes to group A. What would you like? Go ahead. Should we try? World Wide Web? Okay. World Wide Web for? Four. Four hundred. Four hundred Your question is about the World Wide Web. Yeah. Can you access the web without a computer? Steve? Yes. The answer is yes. In fact, audience, via what means can you access the web today without a computer? Oh. Cell phone, PDA, and other such devices as well. I think we'll get another. Just 
that and the other thing for six hundred. For six hundred dollars. Now in a daily double, you may wager as much of your money as you have, and you're up to let's see, we're adding on so eighteen hundred. So you have eighteen hundred dollars to wager, and the category again is this, that, or the other thing. And all, all eighteen hundred. All eighteen hundred. Now only these guys can answer the following question about secondary storage. Teaching fellows, uh, you know what it's like to to compete against your own students here tonight. 
<laughs> it's a lot of fun, Alex. <laughs> I will take that. And audience, now is your opportunity to ask any question you'd like to get to know your, your participants here a little better. Any question at all? Any question? No? no? I would like to say hi to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, let's move on to group A. Now group A, you're sort of sandwiched in between two teams here doing much better than you. Um, What's your strategy for round two? Raise hand faster. Right here. <laughs> well done. Well, we're glad to have you. And finally, Steve. Um, well, how do you feel about your significant lead here? It obviously reflects the uh, genetic advantage. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. We're glad to have you as well. Let's move on now to double jeopardy. And double jeopardy, of course, all of the categories have been doubled in terms of their point value. We will conclude after double jeopardy, of course, with final jeopardy, with just a final question. But in double jeopardy, our categories will be just as wittily, we hope, as follows. Guys in red shirts, referring, of course, to... Not red hat, but that could work. This, of course, was the shopping for a computer category, but why guys in red shirts? Comp USA, Comp USA arms their sales staff with red shirts. It's category two, sharks with lasers, borrowing again from the Austin Powers theme, and in this case, focusing on CDs and DVDs, otherwise known as optical technologies. In category three, we have surfs up, referring, of course, to the worldwide uh, web yet again. Finally, in category four, we have the Wizard of Oz, referring, of course, rather, this is my favorite, to software and operating systems. And finally, we have the staff only category. We're going to proceed to fill the board here, and we are going to proceed to ask who had control last, which was the TS. We'll start us off by choosing a category. Uh, we're going to keep adding. So at this point, if you want to just keep a final tally, we don't need the differentials at this point. <laughs> so yes. Staff only for 2000. Staff only. A dangerous category. <laughs> okay. We, okay, I like this. What are the first names of the staff members? <laughs> Roman again. Dan, Roman, and Ray. <laughs> And, and David. <laughs> Audience? Oh, oh. All right, they got it for 2000. Now, Group A, mind you, this is the last opportunity to, you know, raise those hands quicker than the others. So, R R Roman's team, what would you like? Category. Right. That was 2000. Yeah. Variation on the theme, staff only for 1600. Staff only for 1600. Stepping lightly here. We will have your question in this case be, <laughs> um, where does, <laughs> Steve, for 1600. Oh, I thought you finished the question. Well, the question is, where is, at this point, 1600. <laughs> Where does Dan go to school? <laughs> Fred, you lose the 1600. The question's now up in the air for... I saw Group A's hand go up first. <laughs> group A. MIT. MIT is, in fact, correct. So Group A earns 1600. And I'm afraid uh, the Steve team loses the 1600. But, Dan, you're... Uh, no, Group A, you're in control of the board. What would you like? Sharks with lasers for two thousand dollars, and your question is, your question is, your question is, whew, if I want to back up all the music I have stored on my PC in a way that takes up the least storage space, what sort of disk should I use, Steve? Audience? DVDs versus CDs. In fact, DVDs because they hold so much more. For two thousand dollars, out of the hole, back up to forty-two hundred dollars. Control the board. Time for just a couple more questions. The TFs are clapping for you over there. What would you like? Surfs up for two thousand. 
surfs up for $2,000. And your question about the web again is, your question is, your question is, your question is, why is it called the WWW? Group A. World Wide Web. World Wide Web is in fact correct for $2,000. Excellent control of the board. Time is running out. What would you like for, from the board? Guys in the red shirts for 800 Guys in red shirts for $800. And your question is? Your question is? Your question is, do you plan to use the PC to play video games? <laughs> Group A. I don't plan to play. OK, I guess we have to take it for $800. <laughs> it was indeed a question about shopping for a PC. <laughs> Final question, Group A, you're in control. Let's go ahead. Um, Surf's up for $1,600. Surf's up for $1,600. Our final question in the double jeopardy round. And your question is, what does DHCP stand for? Ray very casually <laughs> raises his hand. I didn't know that. Dynamic post configuration protocol. Audience? Audience likes it for $1,600. Now the TFs have pulled into a bit of a lead here. We have going into our final Jeopardy round, Steve with $4,200, Group A with $4,800, and the TFs with $6,400. So it's still anybody's game because the way final Jeopardy works, of course, is the following. I, in a moment, I'm going to tell them the general category from which the one final Jeopardy question will be drawn. They will then, on a piece of paper, have to commit themselves to a dollar value. When I then ask them the question, if they get it right, of course, they earn that dollar value. But if they get it wrong, they lose that dollar value. But they do not know how much the other teams have wagered. So therefore, it can still be anyone's game based on the outcome of this question. Question from the audience. Yeah, right. so the dynamic configuration protocol is actually a dynamic control protocol. Where are you reading that? Tell me, well, let us <laughs> check our own website. And then the authorship of that week's jargon. <laughs> pulling up, pulling up DHCP. Somebody wants to take those, that, those points away from you guys. And it is, in fact, Dynamic host configuration protocol, all on up for having overlooked that typo in the jargon. Fortunately, it was not an exam question. It is, in fact, dynamic host configuration protocol. So please tweak, and my apologies, your jargon sheet correctly. Wow. Woo! Minus 1,600 for me. All right. Well, we're moving into Final Jeopardy. The, quest the category for Final Jeopardy tonight is going to be uh, the following. To be or not to be. To be or not to be. Go ahead and jot down on your piece of paper how much of your $4,200 for Steve, $4,800 for Group A, or $6,400 for the TFs that you would like to wager on this question. Oh, we'll get that. All right, do we have a dollar amount on each person's paper? Take just a moment. Yeah. Got to commit to a value. <coughs> Realize this part is difficult for the audience to endure. This is enough. Suspense is killing. Indeed. All right, I think the numbers have been penned. Your question, three teams, is the following. How do you represent the number 65,535 in binary.
Give him one more loop. We're going to need to have an answer. While these folks finish writing their answer, I'm actually going to go down to the TFs. The TFs, of course, wagered $6,400, uh, had $6,400. They decided to wager $3,201. And their answer was this, a sequence of how many? Well, we think 16. They think a sequence of 16 ones. So we let's just, they've counted them several times. Moving on to the Steve Crew seemed to be writing down 16 ones. <laughs> um, they wagered $4,200. And I see a lot of zeros on the back, a couple of ones. Um, they wagered $4,200. And Group A finally wagered, it appears, $14,000. Fourteen thousand four hundred one. Fourteen hundred one. Fourteen hundred one, because that does say fourteen thousand four hundred one, <laughs> which is well beyond your means right now. Um, your answer was sixteen ones. Sixteen one. Um, I'm afraid I, I'm not quite sure that's that's so true. It is in fact a sequence of sixteen ones. We of course would not ask a particularly challenging question of that sort of magnitude, but it is in fact sixteen ones because sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six is a number I've quoted several times in class, though perhaps it was over the head intentionally, but that is in fact the value 2 to the 16, the relevance of which is that when you discuss thousands of colors or the so-called 16-bit color, that was the number of colors that we said a monitor could in fact display. However, the, the long burst 65,535 is those 16 ones because of course when you count in binary, what number do you start counting at? Zero, not one. So if you start counting at zero, the highest up you can get with that many bits is 65,535. A round of applause for all of our participants, if we may. Thank you so much for partaking. We have on your way out the answer to an oft-asked question, which is, what should I do, what can I do after Computer Science E1? This is the staff's subjective opinion on those courses that we think subsequent to Computer Science E1 you will have the requisite background for. They are available on the blue sheets by both windows. On your way out, we will see you next week.